Good evening and thanks for joining us for DETV News. I'm Matt Ford. As the year begins to wind down, we're taking a look back at a few of our top events and stories of 2022. We here at DETV have been so proud to bring Delaware's only televised newscast back to the first state, something that's been missing for over a decade. Let's begin with the story of a local community hero who touched the lives of many. You may remember him as a principal, a leader, and one of the pillars of our community. Former principal of Warner Elementary School, Dr. Terrence Newton, passed away in March after succumbing to his injuries from a motorcycle crash in Newark. The hearing of his passing stretched far and wide as thousands came to Wilmington to attend his funeral at the Chase Center on the waterfront. A few months after his passing, the community came together in a special way to honor his life and legacy. Here's our Kaylin Pride with the story. Many community members and leaders gathered on the steps of Warner Elementary School to give tribute and honor to the late Dr. Terrence Newton. A portion of West 18th Street was renamed after the former beloved principal and is now known as Dr. Terrence Newton Way. When we heard of his death, we thought an appropriate gesture by the city would be to name the street in front of his school in his honor with a sign that reminded the students of Principal Newt each time they walked into the school. While we honor Newt with this street naming, the real value of these signs is to remind all of us of what a life well lived looks like. The mayor was also joined by City Council President Trippy Congo, Red Clay Consolidated School District Superintendent Darrell Green, Acting Warner Elementary School Principal Kimberly Brewington, and his widow Paula Newton. My husband loves everything about Warner, but most of all, he loves providing his babies with hope, love, and a pathway for success. I know he's smiling down on us right now, so let's do what Dr. Newton would want us to do continue with this legacy, and as he would say, it's game time. Dr. Newton passed away on March 21st after succumbing to his injuries sustained in a motorcycle accident. And so we, as we honor, and this is one of many things that we'll continue to do to honor his legacy, but to let everyone know that the work that we established here under his leadership is not in vain. In his speech, Trippy Congo says that he hopes there will be a school named after this inspirational community hero. On the now Dr. Terrence Newton Way at Warner Elementary School with DETV, I'm Kaylin Pride. Dr. Newton was also honored by his alma mater, Delaware State University, with a scholarship. Two students majoring in education from DSU were the first recipients of the scholarship. Dr. Newton was a pivotal figure in the community and received national recognition for his service and dedication to his young students. Also big this year, it's been a devastating year for the families and tenants that were living on the 800 block of North Adams Street here in Wilmington, as they were told they would have to leave their homes because almost the entire block was condemned. Let's take a look back as again, Kaylin Pride was on the scene and spoke with the displaced tenants. Yeah, we need some help. Many tenants on the 800 block of North Adams Street were enraged after coming home from work Monday afternoon to find red and yellow posters taped to their doors stating that their homes are now condemned. The entire block got shut down. Every one of us, you know, got evicted without even notice. This all started because of a wall collapse right here between these two buildings, which prompted officials from license and inspection to come out and further investigate. Because of the structural issues, um, the buildings were deemed unsafe um, and we had to post that. Uh, as far as the eviction, you know, we cannot allow people to stay in unsafe structures. All fingers, including city officials like 4th District Council member Michelle Harley, are being pointed at the landlord, A.J. Picorni. So when the cops got here, um, at first they was initially out here because the residents start uh, blocking A.J. in because A.J. was trying to leave. And um, from that incident to the cops blocking all the residents from going back inside the apartments because they was going in and out and like the elderly um, residents they didn't come out at all, but the cops made them come out and leave. And they was crying, 
uh, yelling at AJ. Uh, it was kids out here crying yesterday. Um, it was just sad. In her statement, Harley says she voted yes to the housing legislation back in 2021. The legislation she's referring to is the blight bill that was passed by Wilmington City Council in February of 2021. The ordinance was set in place to hold landlords accountable for unfixed code violations. City Council President Trippy Congle told DETV that he thinks the city could have done better with preparing for situations like this. Not placing any blame on the city. I think it's solely on the, the landlord. We do, we do need to hold him accountable. But I think that the city could have done a better job of preparing for what was, what was happening to the residents. So where are they now? Many of the displaced tenants were placed at the Newcastle County Hope Center, while others were put right here at the Fairview Inn Motel. The, where the families are staying, at least eight of those families, is a deplorable motel called, called Fairview off of the Route 9 corridor. I just left there. It is roach infested. There are bed bugs. The bedding was dirty. Tabana Jordan, her fiance and two-year-old disabled child had to move abruptly into the motel and she is concerned about what the future holds. I'm a very good tenant. I pay every time I'm supposed to pay. And at the end of the day, if I have things that need to be taken care of in my home, I expect them to get taken care of. All my, babes, my bills were paid for the month, so as of yesterday, it's like I have to pull funds out of nowhere to figure out where I'm going to go because of this man's neglect. Delaware Attorney General Kathy Jennings announced today that the Department of Justice will be launching an investigation into the what they're calling recidivist Wilmington landlord Aldolf J. Percorny, who is now being cited for 372 code violations. On the 800 block of North Adams Street in Wilmington, Delaware, I'm Kaylin Pride. Five months after, tenants that moved into the motel had to move once again, and we hope that they're doing well. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, it was a year full of ups and downs for the Wilmington City Council. We'll tell you why. Plus, the torch for the annual turkey drive has been passed to DETV's own, and we'll take a look back at Delaware stars moving and grooving on the dance floor. Stay with us. Still searching for cheap gas prices? Dump the pump and ride Dart. You can Dart to your destination for only $4 all day. Let Dart do the driving while you enjoy our free Wi-Fi available on all buses statewide. While scrolling through your favorite apps, don't forget to download Dart's free transit app for real-time bus information and enjoy the convenience of contactless fare payment through Dart Pass. So what are you waiting for? Dump the pump and try transit. Visit dartfirstdate.com or call 1-800-652-DART. A new beginning, a second chance. Call it what you want, but this is what never giving up looks like. This is what finding someone who believes in you looks like. I thought Goodwill was just a store until a friend told me about Train to Gain through Goodwill's Job Resource Center. After five years away, I had a lot of self-doubt and fear about my future. But Goodwill had my back, and today, I love where I work. They matched me with an employer who believes in second chances, and now I have a new start thanks to Goodwill. To learn more about Goodwill's career development opportunities, call today. Welcome back to DETV News Year in Review. It's been quite the year for the City of Wilmington and Wilmington City Council as members have both come and gone. The city was shocked and saddened this year by the loss of former council member Rashima Dixon. Elected to city council in 2016, Dixon was the youngest and first black woman at the at-large seat. Her passing was announced earlier this year. Outside of her political career, she was a founder of a community strategy organization entitled RD Innovative Solutions. Shortly after her passing, longtime councilwoman Loretta Walsh passed after her health caused her to step down. Walsh served her residents in the third district for over three decades. And lastly, former council member Linda Gray also passed suddenly away this year. She joined city council to fill an open seat back in 2019 and has since served the community well. The passing of all three former councilwomen have shocked and saddened many in the community. However, the Wilmington City Council has begun filling the vacancies for one seat. Take a look. My country and my state. And the city charter. And the city charter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. After almost two months, the Wilmington City Council at large seat has been filled. Letitia Bracey has been confirmed as the newest city council member. 
Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Harley? Yes. After a vote of 11 yeas, she was sworn in and immediately took her seat. I want to uh, thank all of my council colleagues now uh, for your vote of confidence um, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Gracie replaces the late former councilwoman Loretta Walsh who stepped down in October and soon after passed. To fill the vacancy, the Committee of the Whole of Wilmington City Council reviewed various letters of interest and resumes from qualified candidates. After holding public interviews, Gracie was recommended. Uh, so I, I, I know that we definitely chose the correct person. Uh, so I'm just looking forward to working together so that we can just keep moving our city forward, keep, keep helping the people who need help, and just being advocates for our city and, and supporting the city of Wilmington. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Bracey has an extensive background in government and community relations. Before launching her own consulting firm in 2019, Bracey worked in the campaign and governmental offices of many state officials. Bracey's term will end December 2024. With DETV, I'm Kaylin Pride. And speaking of new leaders, 2022 was an election for many. I, myself, was able to catch up with many newly elected officials at the November 8th election results party right here in Wilmington. Let's look back at what they had to say. 23 looks uh, we're, like we're going to continue the great work that we've started. Um, again, you mentioned Delaware Earns. It's going to be a lot of work building that out. Um, you know, I, I mentioned this before, but we're building out our, um, our board. And that is, it's such a joy. I mean, I have to say it looks so much more diverse than any other board across the state. And it's really invigorating and exciting. And, and we're going to continue that work. For some of us, I like Lydia York, she had never run before. And I remembered what it was like to run for the first time, you know, on such a big scale. Um, and then for others like, you know, Colleen and Kathy Jennings, we did this before. What do you feel is the most uh, closest to your heart and sort of the issues that matter most to you? The issues that matter most to me are to have this office fulfill its statutory responsibility uh, in terms of what's required and what's supposed to be done and then, and then the time frame that it's supposed to be done. Uh, that's what I really hope for. Auditor-elect Lydia York will be sworn into office on January 3rd. The ceremony will take place on the campus of Delaware State University. As for another top story this year, in 2019, she made history by being the first black woman to serve on the state's highest court, but now she's moving up. Earlier this month, it was announced that Justice Tamika Montgomery Reeves was confirmed to the Federal Appeals Court. The United States Senate voted 53 to 35 to approve Montgomery Reeves nomination to the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. Overall, the Senate has now confirmed 97 of Biden's judicial nominees, the vast majority being women or people of color. Montgomery Reeves will be the second black woman to serve on the Philadelphia based court. And when we come back, Shakira Denise is here one last time for 2022 with your weekend New Year's forecast. And Nick Allison-Drini will be here to talk all about sports in the first state. We'll be right back. Government doesn't make a move without an agenda, some type of plan. The problem is we haven't been on the agenda. Sometimes we're overlooked, sometimes our interests aren't the interest of those in power. I'm your host, Kerwin Gaines, on DETV's new show, The Agenda. We're gonna do our best to ensure that you, Delawareans, are knowledgeable about what's going on in the assembly. Federal government, local government, it doesn't matter. We're gonna do our best to ensure that folks that make the agenda on a daily basis have to answer for it. Let them explain what they're doing. If it affects you, it's on the agenda. Welcome back. Shakira Denise has been giving us the weekend weather forecast for all of 2022, and it's time for her to do it once more. Hey, Shakira. Thanks, Matt. 
I hope everyone had a great Christmas and was able to spend the holidays surrounded by their loved ones. Now, let's get into our weekend weather forecast for the end of the year. On Feel Good Friday, December 30th, it'll be a high of 51 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Now, New Year's Eve day, it'll be cloudy with showers throughout the day and a high of 50 degrees. And to bring in the new year on Sunday, it'll be a warm winter day with a high of 59 degrees and some morning showers. I'm Shakira Denise, and it's been a pleasure bringing the weather to you, our DETV family. Make sure to tune into our New Year's Eve show featuring myself, Kerwin Gaines from DETV's The Agenda, Ivan and Vincenza from Good Morning Wilmington, city and state officials, performances, and so much more. We cannot wait. Hope to see you and have a safe and happy new year. Back to you, Matt. Shakira, thank you so much, and we will see you again next year. Now here's another DETV news staple. Nick Allison Drini is here to give us an update on all things sports. Hey, Nick. Thanks, Matt. What's up, Delaware? And welcome back into DETV News. I'm Nick Allison Drini. Let's talk winter sports season as the Eagles still looking to lock up that number one seed in the NFC and a national basketball tournament is back at Cape Henlopen this week. But let's begin with the week three winter high school sports rankings, courtesy of Delaware Live Sports. We will start with the boys basketball. Not too many shakeups early in the season. Tower Hill still sitting at that top spot, followed by Middletown, Sally's, Howard, Seaford, Caravel, Apo, Sanford, and then William Penn and Dover rounding out your top 10. Now we'll take a look at the girls basketball rankings where once again, the defending state champs are at the top of this list. The Caravelle Bucks, they come in at number one, followed by number two, Sanford, Ursuline three, Tattnall four, and AI DuPont rounding out the top five, followed by St. E's, Archmere, St. Mark's, Apo, and Delmarva Christian. Now let's head to the mat to check out the updated wrestling rankings, team and individual, as we come out of the winter break. Let's check out the team rankings first, and we'll start with Division I, Sussex Central, K. Penlopen, Cesar Rodney, Sally's, and Smyrna. Now let's jump to D2, Caravelle, DMA, Laurel, Lake Forest, and St. Mark's rounding out the top five. And now here are the DLS individual wrestling rankings for all 14 weight classes. We're going to flash them for you up on your screen right now. A little movement, as you can see, early in the season. And of course, Max Agresti winning the Beast of the East just a few weeks ago. He headlines the rankings, leading the way at 215 pounds. Sticking with high school sports, one of the biggest high school basketball tournaments on the East Coast returns this week. The annual slam dunk to the beach got underway Tuesday at Cape Penlopen High School. The tournament features some of the top ranked high school teams from across the country and will put 20 teams on display here in 2022. Some fantastic talent has come through this tournament, including LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony and Kevin Durant. Over the years, the tournament has gone on to produce 48 NBA All-Star appearances and five MVP awards. You can get tickets at Cape Penlopen for $5 at the door. The only thing disappointing about this holiday was the Eagles dropping that game to the Cowboys on Christmas Eve, but the Eagles now will look to lock up that number one seed this weekend against the Saints. Jalen Hurts reportedly has a chance to play and is pushing to do so as a win would lock up the top seed in the NFC for the Birds and at the same time push the Saints out of playoff position. And remember the Eagles, they have the Saints pick in next year's draft, so double the incentives this week when the Birds welcome the Saints to Lincoln Financial Field. Kickoff is set for Sunday at 1 o'clock. Well, that'll do it for sports this week. We'll send it back to you, Matt. I just want to say we hope everyone has a very happy and safe New Year's. Dick, thank you so much and a happy New Year to you. Now it's time to bring you some of our favorite stories from 2022. We're going to start with our producer and reporter, Kaylin Pride's favorite story. That's Delaware's Dancing with the Stars. Take a look. This past weekend, the Wilmington Public Library celebrated their 100th anniversary with a bang. Dancing with the Delaware Stars featured local well-known Delawareans who trained hard to bring down the house for the sold out event. Like the hit show Dancing with the Stars, some of Delaware's influential people were paired up to compete against one another for the 2022 title. Choreographer, dancer, actor, director, and producer Darian DeWitt Henson hosted the event, and the special guest and performer of the evening was none other than singer-songwriter Kenny Lattimore. This library is giving education about arts, about dance, which includes dance and music, and it is that kind of foundation that just makes us proud and it it expands us, and that's what's wonderful about being here celebrating uh, the 100th of the Black Bear. 
The competition featured a panel of judges, including Ray Jones Avery, Executive Director of the Christiana Cultural Arts Center, and Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long. I am so excited to be a judge. As someone who grew up doing choreography and dance, uh, I am thrilled to be here. There's nothing more important than the arts. Raising funds for our library, that is front and central. The whole experience was unique. It was magical. It was inspirational. Uh, it was just wonderful. I had the chance to catch up with one of the choreographers, Brandy Moore, who shared her experience about working and choreographing for three different couples. Dancing with the Stars Delaware was so much fun choreographing for it. It was a bit of a challenge teaching people who don't have that much dance experience, um, but it was a really uh, fun time. Co-anchor of DTV News, Lauren Wilson, was one of the featured stars of the night who trained under Brandy and strut her stuff on the dance floor. As contestants shimmied and shake the night away, the anniversary gala ended with a Soul Train line of celebration. Delaware Dancing with the Stars was definitely a night to remember, and we hope to see it again around this time next year. At the Wilmington Public Library with DETV, I'm Caitlin Pride. It was great watching my co-anchor Lauren Wilson there on the dance floor. She did a great job. And speaking of Lauren, her top pick for this year, take a look at Operation Hair Care. It was a great day for many young students as they received a priceless gift that gave a boost to their self-esteem. After a hiatus due to the pandemic, the Colonial School District's Operation Hair Care was back in full swing. 20 to 25 underprivileged students from elementary schools in the district were bused to Paul Mitchell, the school of Delaware, for a day at the salon. Cosmetology students spent the day giving back by providing basic hair care services to the needy students. Um, I seriously almost cried like three times. Happy tears because this is, it's fulfilling and I, I just, I, I'm glad that I'm able to put smiles on their faces and then they gave me little thank you cards and they're so sweet. <laughs> we teach our students that we're day makers and you have to give back. So when we bring in the community and we share our gifts with them, then it just kind of spreads the love and it teaches them to keep giving back outside after school. The partnership between the district and trade school will continue quarterly throughout the school year, giving students much needed care. Uh, many of the students that we deal with in Colonial School District, of course, um, coming from various backgrounds and different circumstances. So it gives them a chance to build their self-esteem. It gives them a chance to build their personality, see themselves from a different angle, shine a light on yourself and beautify themselves. I even had the chance to speak with some of the students about their new do. What do you think about your haircut? It, I think it's good. I am really happy and excited. I haven't got my hair done in a long time. Usually I would just put it in a bun or something. But yeah, I'm just really happy. <laughs> Everyone deserves a day to feel pampered. And why not the students of the Colonial School District? The future professionals of Paul Mitchell have certainly brightened the day for many, and this will be a moment that they won't forget. At the Paul Mitchell School in Newark, Delaware with DETV, I'm Caitlin Pride. Great story there. Now don't go anywhere. After the break, you'll want to find out what my favorite story is of the year. We'll have that and much more coming right up. Still searching for cheap gas prices? Dump the pump and ride DART. You can dart to your destination for only $4 all day. Let dart do the driving while you enjoy our free Wi-Fi available on all buses statewide. While scrolling through your favorite apps, don't forget to download dart's free transit app for real-time bus information and enjoy the convenience of contactless fare payment through dart pass. So what are you waiting for? Dump the pump and try transit. Visit dartfirstdate.com or call 1-800-652-DART. Well, before the break, we saw our producer slash reporter, Kaylin Pride, as well as my co-anchor, Lauren Wilson's favorite stories of the year, and now it's time to look at mine. Well, we had quite a few stars from Hollywood to Dollywood come right here to the first state. The legend herself, Dolly Parton, made a visit to Delaware for the statewide celebration of her Imagination Library. In Dolly's Imagination Library program, children up to the age of five years old can receive a free book in the mail each month to inspire a love of reading. To sign up for the Imagination Library, you can go to the Delaware Library's website on your screen. 
Next up, Grammy-winning music artist Darius Rucker might have a new excuse to come here to Delaware more often. The frontman of Hootie and the Blowfish turned country singer hit the links at Rock Matter Golf Course earlier this year before playing the Met in Philadelphia. He and his drummer were joined by Rock Manor Superintendent Mike Fagan and Assistant Superintendent Mark Foster on the green. And most recently, White Lotus star and Delaware native Aubrey Plaza made a special appearance at the Carriage House at Rockwood Museum and Park. Plaza and her creative partner Dan Murphy, both Delaware natives, took center stage to read and discuss their new storybook, The Return of the Christmas Witch a sequel to last year's debut from the duo called The Legend of the Christmas Witch. Plaza and Murphy spent nearly two hours signing books for the hundreds of children and adults who came out to see them. Whatever the reason attendees showed up, it's evident that these two natives who have made it big in Hollywood still have pride for their hometown. We love that. Before we sign off for 2022, founder and CEO of DETV, Ivan Thomas, has been giving a long-standing legacy to carry on for years to come. Take a look. Feeling pride with DETV, and right now we're outside at Norman Oliver's annual turkey drive. It's his 40th and final year, and next year, DETV's own Ivan Thomas will be taking over. You guys hold a special heart, a special place in my heart. And it's more, it's a privilege to take over after Norman yeah. and to keep doing what we do. So I'm curious, Rihanna, I feel I feel good. I'm out here. Look at all, all, the, all these volunteers. As you can see, all the seniors are happy, and we're going to um, help over 2,000 people, which is so cool. Which is so cool. Our big donations need to be bigger now because it's just growing yeah. and growing and you know the seniors need more and more help and hopefully with the turkeys and you know and more food drives that we're going to be doing and working in the communities a lot more um moving forward it will be able to help them 2019 was our biggest year so that was that was amazing we were probably feeding uh, giving away 6,000 turkeys at that point. Wow. Well, then, of course, COVID came. Um, we struggled with that for a couple years because we didn't like that. But we started giving out gift cards instead just to the seniors here in the city. And then with it being Norman's last year, we just decided let's end it where it started, which is here it's where it started in the city of Wilmington. So we've been doing this with, with Norman for about six years or so now. We've been able to support. Um, I'm from this area, so I've worked in all these stores in Wilmington. Um, we have a great group of associates that always support this. Um, it's, it's an exciting time for us every year when it comes up. All right, have a happy holidays and we'll see you next year. <laughs>